Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back and we are feeling much better. Uh, Thank you for those of you who sent us notes. Um, Julie and I's secret to getting over everything is NyQuil. NyQuil, DayQuil, NyQuil, DayQuil. (laughs) Once you're out, then you might actually have something, but we made it to the bottom of the uh, jug and we feel better. That's right. So thank you for your (laughs) considerate uh, messages, especially through Instagram. And yes, we are posting a lot of personal stuff on Instagram, which a lot of you seem to appreciate. So definitely check us out over at Tim and Julie Harris on Instagram. So today's topic is because one of you did mention or rather uh, request this topic on Instagram. We have done a lot of podcasts on social media. We've done a lot of podcasts on making videos on YouTube and all the rest of it. And so what we're doing today is we're going to be sharing with you the top 16 real estate agent videos for YouTube. And generally speaking, these videos are going to be designed um, to generate uh, leads for you, free leads, referral leads. Uh, and also in doing so, this will also be videos that you can use to reinforce your proactive lead generation. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this list. We're going to do our best to get through all 16 of these video ideas. But what Julie did is when creating this list is we spent a lot of time researching it. And um, we've done similar podcasts this in the past. And the information about what gets viewed on YouTube, generally speaking over the years is pretty much the same. Now, remember, this is not agents looking at, you know, coaching or podcasts about real estate training and nothing like that. These are videos and what we're studying for your, for your sake are videos that will attract to you buyers and primarily sellers. So that is what the topic of today's show is. And again, this is a request that someone sent us on Instagram. Actually, several of you sent us on Instagram and yeah, and just to be very clear Julie and I are huge advocates of marketing and advertising and, you know, YouTube and social media and all the rest of it, but it has to be positioned in your business and frankly, in your minds correctly. So there's always proactive lead generation, which is what the primary focus of our coaching program is. And then you enhance your proactive lead generation with passive lead generation, or really the simplest way of saying it is with advertising. All this stuff, social media, you know, postcards, direct mail, CRMs, all that stuff. The easiest way to understand all that is just to put it into the mental emotional box of being advertising. And then you won't be frankly bamboozled by people trying to sell you uh, into the idea that branding is somehow the new greatest and latest thing. Branding is just another word for advertising. And I know some of you again will want to argue with me about that. So here's the simplest definition of advertising. Are you spending money to, uh, in the hopes and you know, that you're going to generate a lead that is nothing more than an ad versus are you say doing the real work of real estate and picking up the phone and actually calling somebody that's in the market to say, sell a house, get the difference proactive versus passive. So Julie, this is a great topic. That's right. And a lot of you have said you've figured out how to make videos, but you run out of content ideas. So on today's show, we're presenting to you the top videos that you should be posting on your realtor social media sites, but especially on YouTube. When you create each video, you're going to use it not just on YouTube, but the same video can go on Facebook and Instagram. And this keeps your message consistent and efficiently keeps all three assets updated. Now, let's tell them how we did this research. So Julie has some of the top agents in the United States as personal coaching clients. Not all of them. Some of them are on their way to becoming top agents. Up and comers. And so what she did and what they do is they'll go on to, say, for example, YouTube, using today's example as, you know, for example, (laughs) and she'll then... Uh, with them do studies and finding out who is doing a really great job, who in their local market and a competing agent is doing a great job of doing uh, YouTube videos. And then we can go in and do a little, apply a little analytics using vidIQ or something like that, and then help our coaching clients to figure out, well, is that video that the competing agent, um, are they actually getting leads from it? What's the, essentially what specifically in the video was working? Let's get a transcript of the video and let's see what's, you know, essentially really deep diving into each of these media, uh, I, I would say the uh, media uh, topics, content maybe. topics yeah. Yeah, of these videos and then discerning which ones actually 
are the fluff versus which ones that are, you know, obviously getting the clicks that are probably resulting in at very least, um, you know, brand reinforcement. So when we're going through these ideas, know that these have been tested in all markets. That's right, because it's not just the quantity. There's a lot of agents that'll just throw up, you know, video after video, but not all of them are valuable. Some of them are test videos. Some of them didn't get hardly any views or any responses. So there's more to this than just scanning YouTube and seeing what's going on. Let me throw this in here too, because I yeah. know it's not in your notes. Um, what some of you also need to realize are is the fact that if you want to have a lot of people viewing your social media, say for example, videos on YouTube, you're going to most likely, you're not going to get it through organic. The, you're not going to get it through people just discovering your media and falling in love with it. You're going to have to spend money. You're going to have to promote your videos. You're going to have to actually, um, you know, frankly run ads to get people to view your ads, which are YouTube videos, you know, to get people to view your content, you guys are going to have to accept the fact that it's going to require not just good content, but it's also going to require spending some money to get people to view the content. And Facebook ads, oh, and I'm not, sorry, not Facebook, but YouTube ads using a company like vidIQ. You, I'm not vidIQ, but VJ. You guys can check them out. Just Google it. That's a great source of uh, getting completely and totally, um, you know, YouTube friendly, YouTube approved ads on YouTube to promote your video. So if you were to make like say five or six really good videos and you're going to use one of Julie's topics from today, and then you were to throw some money behind them and promote them. And what, uh, what, uh, VJ does and some of these other companies do is they actually run little ads on what they determine to be your most likely competing videos, videos. So they'll run video ads on your competing, uh, videos. And then the idea is that the consumer is then going to want to watch your video as well. And they also do it other different ways, but uh, YouTube on itself is just a massive, you know, obviously incredibly profitable, um, you know, advertising cash machine. Now, as I go through all this, if any of you are feeling overwhelmed because I've just thrown a bunch of words and terminology and concepts at, uh, at you and you're thinking, oh my gosh, do I have to learn all this? Here's the answer. And I know I'm slightly off topic, but I just want to, you know, frankly, clarify all this for you. You don't have to learn any of this. You never have to do any of it if you don't choose to, because if you become really good at proactive lead generation, you don't have to do any of the advertising. Remember, advertising is everything other than proactive lead generation. And I'm going to say that again. If you, when you become really good at proactive lead generation, you don't have to spend money to generate leads. And I'm thinking like one of our hair certified coaches, Ziggy, mm -hmm. right? And she doesn't, she generates uh, more or less all of her business from proactive lead generation. That's right. She's been coaching client for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is not spending money on, as far as I know, as last time I talked with her, which was yesterday, yep. I mean, she didn't mention spending any money on advertising or things like of yep. that. It's all proactive lead generation. That's right. So if you can only, if you have limited time, which all of us have, if you have limited money, which all of us have, and you have to choose where to spend your time, I will strongly suggest you learn how to be a proactive lead generator opposed to trying to figure out all of this, com the complexity of what we're, um, you know, of social media and advertising in general. But with that said, here are the concepts. Yeah. Since we know you're going to do this anyway. Right. Right. So YouTube is the most important place to post because your videos will then become searchable on Google. If you don't know how to use YouTube yet, we do have a podcast out there about YouTube for realtors. So on to our top topics for professional real estate agents to post on social media, which when done consistently should create listing and buyer lead generation for you. And we're going to get on to that in just a second. First, we're going to give you a couple of quick notes to keep in mind before you start filming. Three quick notes. Number one, when you are filming any property, whether it is your listing or someone else's, be certain you have written permission to film. That can be a simple email or text from the owner or from the listing agent who got it from the owner. Okay. Now, now, technically though, legally, if you're filming something, even a, pr a private residence and you're filming it from uh, standing on public ground, like a sidewalk, then technically you're, o you're able to film it legally. But what Julie's saying is more about etiquette than it is the law. Uh, Don't get yourself in hot water. Exactly. Yeah. Cause you didn't ask, especially if it's not your listing. Okay. Note number two, each video must have something of value plus a call to action. A call to action, also known as a CTA is where you ask the viewer to do something call you, text you, comment below, and ask questions. Yes, you do literally have to say that. Okay, note number three, <clears throat> excuse me, number three. You don't have to go out and get a bunch of equipment. Use your iPhone videos or iMovie to get started. Done is definitely better than perfect. 
So don't use analysis paralysis as your excuse to procrastinate. I would say that's probably the number one thing that we hear why they don't do stuff like this. Just, just use your iPhone and there's different, go on, I guess where are YouTube and do yeah. a little bit, watch a little video on the ideal settings for making a YouTube video using your iPhone. It's very simple. You just got to yeah. change it to 4k and the resolution. There's just a couple like little, you know, clicks you have to make and then you're good as gold. So don't overthink the creation of the videos. You don't need a bunch of equipment. What's amazing is the technology, again, I'm using your iPhone, the mic just right out of your iPhone is brilliant. The uh, camera right out of your iPhone is brilliant. You don't need a bunch of, of extra fancy stuff just to create videos that people are gonna wanna watch. And the other thing that's fascinating is that the content that's highly produced, that is going to be something that someone spent a lot of time on is going to get usually the same amount of consumption views as something that's essentially shot with an iPhone, but the content's really good. In other words, somebody's showing something or explaining something using Julie's examples that is a, a great deal of value to the consumer. So your takeaway is do not use the excuse that you need to figure out some fancy ass software program and hire a bunch of you know hire video. A film crew. Exactly. You don't <laughs> yeah. need to do any no. of that. All right. So top 16 YouTube real estate agent videos that generate leads. Go for it, Julie. Yes. And some of these we'll spend time on and some of them are pretty self-evident. My The first one is one of my favorites and that is market updates. These need to be done every month. You can do them every week, but here's how you do it. You break down price ranges and zip codes and report the highest sales in specific areas. I call this what's hot and what's not. The average list to sell price ratio, days on the market, and trends. This information can be found in the email reports that your board of realtors sends to you every month. Do you open those? They're in your email. They might be in your junk. Nice charts and graphs if you can include it in your video description. This is number one because the content is literally done for them. All they have to do is find the report and report on it. Now, here's the extra sweet part of that idea is then you can take that report and you can essentially drop it into the show notes or the description of your video. And then that's going to be something that you can lead generate from because you'll take, you'll do your video. You're going to explain to them that the show notes from what you just uh, explained in the video are, you know, scroll down and then there, there are Mr. Potential Seller. And then within the show notes, you can then do your CTA where you're offering to, you know, something as basic as a C, uh, you know, a CMA, obviously mm -hmm. those are always seemingly going to work <laughs> to generate potential uh, leads, but you might also in this market want to start marketing a list of not or yet to be uh, listed properties or properties that aren't in the MLS that, uh, you know, again, I'm not telling you guys to do uh, break your rules of your MLSs. We did a podcast yesterday. We were talking about all these places where, frankly, the inventory is lurking that you are not looking most likely new construction, all the other things we talked about. So go back and listen and then maybe offer a uh, said report or again, use our show notes from our past podcast and maybe use some of that content to uh, entice a potential seller to want to do business with you. Don't use the excuse that you don't know how to create content as your reason for not doing this. Experiment with this and have fun with it and don't overanalyze. Point number two. Point number two, do video walkthroughs of your current listings and coming soon listings. This is great for generating leads for you and creates obvious value for your sellers. It is something they're expecting you to do these days. Video is vastly superior to a slideshow. Slideshows are pretty much outdated at this point. So do video walkthroughs of either your current listings. You can do it in, for your brokers, uh, brokerage current listings and certainly your coming soons. But Even if you just do you know, the beautiful backyard of this coming soon as a tease to get people to respond to your video. Well, you also could, and again, you're going to have to you know, adjust accordingly to what I'm about to say, but you could hypothetically be doing videos of new listings during a realtor tour or during a walkthrough sure. or something like that to let the market know about new stuff that's for sale. Uh, we've seen a lot of agents, especially upper end agents that are really trying to get traction in new markets. We've coached them to start videotaping. Julie always suggests with permission, and obviously that's a good idea, of all the new, of all the listings in a particular market. Just create videos of just the iPhone walking around, doing a quick, you know, walkthrough, letting the market know about it, and then hammering down into YouTube showing, and then, you know, you can also have that on Instagram and the other social media outlets you're going to very quickly start gathering a lot of potential buyers. And some of those buyers might also have houses to sell. And this will reinforce your proactive lead generation because you're establishing yourself as somebody who's actually proactively in the marketplace, getting to know the inventory and letting, you know, potential consumers know about homes for sale. This is also great. This project is potentially great for another way, which is when you're, especially if you're competing for a listing, 
and that seller doesn't know you that well, and they go Googling, what are you all about? And you have all these great videos up there that reinforces you as well. So I kind of like this because it doesn't cost them that much time or money and it accomplishes multiple goals. Well, even if you're like, we know that 93% of the time people are going to choose the agent they're going to work work with because of the fact that they're a they center, know them. They're a, they're a center of influence someone they've used in the past, the consumers used in the past, or their referral from a trusted friend or advisor. What this, let's say they're in that second category, is there a referral from a trusted friend or advisor? When someone is then saying, okay, well, I want to call Julie Harris. You know, Bob said she's a great agent. I'm going to just do a quick search and then I'll see what comes up. As Julie alluded to earlier, YouTube search is now the number, I believe, two or maybe even number one search for anything. So when people are searching anymore, they used to go to Google and now they're going to YouTube. What we're going to see over the next probably less than 12 months is they're going to start using an AI-based search. Maybe it's going to be, you know, who knows what. But the moral of the story is, is that you want to have some content that will reinforce that referral actually following through and calling you and then doing business with you. Uh, it is, it does stand to reason that if you are, let's say, for example, um, you know, Bob referred Julie, but he also referred Nancy, right? And then the seller's doing a little research on Julie and she's doing a little research on Nancy and Julie's got a whole bunch of content on there that reinforces the fact that she's a very proactive agent, uh, whereas Nancy has nothing and all things equal, probably that seller is going to be more inclined to want to do business with Julie because she seems like she's a lot more active in the industry. This all should seem very common sense, commonsensical for all of you guys. Yes. Yeah. But do keep in mind, if you are feeling overwhelmed and you're wondering, you know, what's your next step, it's always to learn how to be a proactive lead generator because this is all about searching for people to do business with you or reinforcing the idea that someone's going to do business with you versus if you're a proactive lead generator, you're calling sellers that you already know have to sell a house and, you know, following our script and our system, they will do business with you. You guys see how yeah. one does require more uh, uh, skill, but over time it requires a hell of a lot less, uh, over time it does require a hell of a lot less effort and it's more of a sure thing. You make seven contacts, you set one listing appointment, that type of thing. Well, it's way faster at the bottom line, right? It is. <laughs> okay, so next we have uh, kind of similar but different. Number three, drone footage of your listings, especially if you can show off the neighborhood amenities as well as the home. Some of you have listings without buildings. It's got acreage. Maybe it's a traditional neighborhood, but there's a really great clubhouse and a pool, and maybe there's an interior park to your neighborhood show off what makes your listing great. And again, you can borrow other agents' listings or listings from your brokerage, but you can certainly do drone footage. Well, again, at that, this is going to require time and effort and how do you fly a, a drone and all that. But let's assume you have a kid who has a drone, right? <laughs> okay, so yeah. maybe you're going to do a drone footage of a new subdivision or all the new subdivisions. Maybe you go on YouTube and you see that no one's done anything like that. And you know by you know the fact that these are popular new subdivisions that people are going to want to know what, you know, phase 47 looks like, right? And they're only on phase 32 now. Mm -hmm. Well, you can fly the drone over and give them some ideas of how things are going to connect up. And guys, have some fun with it. Again, don't overanalyze this. And uh, you will find that people will appreciate your effort. Yes. Number four, do a video preview of your upcoming open house. Post it on all your social media assets as well as email to your database. That's basically a video open house invitation. That's something all of you guys can do. And again, your sellers are going to like that. Point number five, showcase model homes in new construction communities. You were just talking about that. Highlight the builder and what makes their product special. What's the price range, the production time, and the amenities? Do they have spec homes for sale? Do this for all new construction communities in your area. Use Google and newhomesource.com to find them. Okay, so our show notes are uh, down below. So if you are wanting to have Julie's exact points, you can scroll down and get access to all these points. And also remember, you can join Premier Coaching right now for free. The link to join Premier Coaching is down below. So scroll down, grab our notes. You can just cut and paste them. Um, or if you're over on YouTube, you can just look at the transcript and there they are waiting for you. And uh, yeah, use these for yourself. Use this for your training. If, if maybe you have a real estate team or you have a brokerage. But do join Premier Coaching. The link to join Premier Coaching is in the show notes. If you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube, or if you're on, um, you know, iTunes or any of the other millions of places this podcast is listened to, there they are waiting for you. The notes just scroll down and then obviously click and join Premier Coaching. Point number six. Six. Point number six, and this one you can go a lot of different directions. It's kind of fun. Educational or informational videos on specific topics for buyers and sellers. Examples would be. How does a rate buy down work? Is new construction for me? How do I know? What is required to apply for a home mortgage? Top five ways to stage your home for sale. What to expect from a home inspection? 
These again play into the searches that potential prospects are going to be doing. Maybe I'm getting ready to sell my house next month and I'm thinking about, oh, gosh, I got to get rid of the clutter and stage this place. I'm going to hit YouTube for a search. You're going to show your top ways to stage a home in, and then you label the name of your town, the name of your subdivision, and you capture that potential seller. The money with any sort of this media is going to be being very niche focused. So Julie just gave you guys some breadcrumbs uh, to follow. Obviously, you want to choose, say, for example, New Albany, Ohio, New Albany Country Club area. Well, maybe you even want to drill down in a particular area. New Albany, Ohio, New Albany Country Club, Planners Grove, or some one of, you know, one of the little neighborhoods within the overall community. That's going to be something that you're going to discover is a could be a potential gold mine because a lot not a lot of age, agents or even, you know, frankly, big brands are going to have spent the time to really focus in and really niche in a particular area. But you know who will appreciate it? Prospective buyers, many of which will have homes to sell. There you go. Point number seven. And this one may sound counterintuitive. This is going to put the hair on the back of your neck up. Here it is. How to sell your house without a realtor in your town. Well, who might be searching for that? Potential for sale by owners. That's who. This is actually, when you do this video, this is actually a list of all the many, many things that you do to actually get a home sold. Mentioning things like pre-qualifying showing, staging the house, using legal forms, transaction coordination, liability, etc. Again, trying to find those for sale by owners who have not yet put the sign in the yard. You can build on that idea a million different ways. Like yeah. why you're in, how about a video that's specifically geared towards expired sellers? You know, how about a video that's specifically geared towards. That's um, the next one. Oh, it is. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Point number eight. Why sometimes even the best homes, you read my mind, why sometimes even the best homes don't sell the first time and not for the reasons you think. Talking about why expired listings happen. This can have a call to action to speak with to speak to you if they're in this situation. Make sure you're not nasty about the previous agent. I know yeah. a lot of you guys have been coached and trained over the years to sort of uh, you know grind Throw them on under the, the bus. Yeah, exactly. Don't do that. It just doesn't come out well at all. It makes you look like a little sketch, as our nine year old would say. Yes, but you know we did a podcast about why expireds happen, and we did talk about things other than the the agent, other than the price. It can be something like the showing restrictions were too strict, yeah. or maybe the pictures weren't awesome, or maybe it was just you know during COVID and it was a bad timing. So 100%. we've already done those talking points for you. Just find that podcast. Okay, point number nine, film your center of influence events. We teach a lot of center of influence events in Premier Coaching. For example, the pumpkin patch, uh, third, fourth quarter, community garage sale, blood drives. Refer to our 12-month center of influence plan if you are a Premier Coaching member, but maybe you're going to do a, maybe you're going to do a garage sale or a neighborhood sale. You can do a video introducing that, inviting people, you know, filming the neighborhood. This is where it's going to be. And then filming yourself when you're at that event. So use your own center of influence events. Point number 10. Number 10, make videos answering the top 10 questions people ask about New Albany, Ohio, or insert your town. Go to Google and ask Google or ChatGPT or whichever AI you'd like to ask, and you'll have those questions and answers. You can have a friend interview you so that it's a bit more interactive, but this kind of plays into relocation. That could be across town or across state or out of the country. Top 10 questions people ask about Murphy, North Carolina. Well, you know, it's funny too. I was just thinking there are probably in some communities, fires out in San Francisco, for example, and there's a lot of homes for sale now mm -hmm. where it isn't a hot seller's market, you know, where there is actual price reductions that are happening sure. in meaningful ways. Well, that would be another place where you're going to have to tune into what sellers are maybe concerned about. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a housing crash? Is the, you know, all these types of headlines that people are obviously gravitating towards the clickbaity headlines. You could go to uh, really any major media outlet and see what their clickbaity real estate real estate mm -hmm. headlines are, and you could liberate the ones that are the most clickbaity and make those your YouTube video. And you could then take that for the article that they wrote, and you could maybe use those as your talking points and talk again. Like what you'll see is there's no real rational reason just to stay on this topic that there's going to be a housing crash. It's just not going to happen. But people love to think that there will be. People love doom and gloom. Clicks, uh, uh, people will click on doom and gloom a hundred times more than they'll click on something positive. It just is the nature of humans. Who knows why? It hasn't always been that way, by the way, but it certainly is now. So again, if you're in a town where people are feeling a little bit uh, you know, nervous about home values or nervous about future appreciation or just nervous in general, create content about what you know people are already searching for. And mm -hmm. you can use YouTube as a search widget to find out home values in New Albany, Ohio, 
home value uh, predictions 23 uh, 2023 2024 and see what other con see what other videos have come up do that also in google and look to see what uh is obviously getting um you know in the sake of youtube what's getting views and what's getting comments that's a really great sign that that's a good topic that then if you replicate it, you'll have similar results. Well, you mentioned San Francisco. So if I was selling in San Francisco where there is a lot of nervousness in the market and prices have actually come down, one of the um, markets that prices did adjust over last half of last year and part of this year, the headline might be something like, are uh, San Francisco residential home prices crashing? Right. Well, somebody's going to click on that. And then I would make real sure that I knew the fact that just last week, as a matter of fact, uh, Housing Wire reported for two weeks in a row, San Francisco does seem to be stabilizing a bit. So wouldn't that be an interesting video to compare the headline in the past six to nine months versus what seems to be happening now? Wouldn't you be then positioning yourself as an agent that has the knowledge that maybe I'd want to list with? Well, 100%. Especially you guys, if you're very positive about it. It, it. Try to not lean into, uh, really be careful. This is what, you know, you could, Julie had this information, the tip for, you know, mind, right? She listens to this uh, content about what's actually happening in the housing market constantly. She's listening to podcasts. She's reading different things. She writes for major, uh, you know, several major real estate um, trade publications. And she's always talking with smart people about what's really happening. It is actually shocking how really inaccurate the housing news is that's being uh, reported now, or even if it's uh, the headline is correct, that's actually that the words in the headline represent the actual story. <laughs> the way that they yeah. uh, manipulate the content is to always make people think that there's some sort of housing calamity ahead. And yeah. I don't, again, I'm not really sure why that it is. Obviously they're doing that because people want to read that kind of crap. But again, I don't, you know, don't, it's not for us to understand why that's what people want to read. It's for us to understand that if we want people to read our stuff, we're going to have to give them what they want. But within that article, make sure you're using the facts, for example, that Julie just gave you. Yes. For example, my favorite one these days is uh, foreclosures have spiked. Well, considering that foreclosures for years, best the past three to five years have been at you know less than one and a half percent of all mortgages out there. A spike of one and a half percent really is not that dramatic. And yet the headline will be like foreclosures are, you know, spiking. Look at this chart. So then, you know, so, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody clicks on that, but then you give them the facts. And now by the time they watch your video, they feel so much better that the house, you know, housing isn't going to crash. The sky is not falling. Gosh, you know, Tim, Tim, the realtor made me feel a lot better. Maybe it is a good time to buy or sell. Okay. So. Next is number 10, make videos answering the top 10 questions. We did that one. Number 11, how to buy your first house in your town. That is to capture first time buyers. You can do a simple checklist. Of course, working with you would be on the list. Be careful on that one though, because if you're really trying to move into the more expensive real estate and you have created a lot of first time buyer content, that actually will work against you because then that potential seller of that expensive house is going to think that yep. you don't specialize in their uh, type of real estate. The more expensive a house, the more the seller is going to be sensitive that they're going to list with someone who they feel is a specialist with their type of property. Middle road sellers and certainly, you know, I'd say sure. entry level homes, those sellers are not that particular. But as soon as you start getting into the more, let's call it luxury real estate, you're going to have to, you know, really fine tune your approach. Otherwise, you're going to run yeah. those sellers off. But maybe you're, you know, 22, just got your license. Most of your friends are first time buyers. That's going to be your niche for a while. Maybe that would be something for you. So just, you know, keep it in context. Point number 12, film yourself getting ready to door knock, door knocking, and meeting people in a specific community that you wish to specialize in. That could be interesting. Make sure you label it by the neighborhood name. Well, let's work on that one. Your idea that we, we, we talked about this yesterday on the podcast, right? A lot of people were having huge levels of success door knocking into the very neighborhoods that their prospective buyer, that their buyers want to live in. And those buyers also have homes to sell. In other words, uh, Julie, I would sell my house, but I need a place to go. Okay, great. What neighborhood do you want to go? I want to go to Appleville subdivision. All right. So then you have several people that want to live in Appleville, go door knock on, you know, those particular communities and you're going to start generating your inventory. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait around for that seller to list the property, put it in the MLS and the rest of it. You're going to pull that inventory, that listing out of the market, even frankly, before the seller, maybe they're thinking about putting it for sale next year. But here you are knocking on their door with a ready to go buyer. Now it's going to be for sale and you're going to double in that listing. That is a very powerful video for you to create for all kinds of reasons. And hopefully you're seeing that. So let's say, for example, there's another eight or another seller out there, or let's just frame it out right. 
You've got another buyer who's watching, uh, also wanting to buy an Appleville subdivision. And that buyer also has a house to sell. That buyer is now watching a video of you actually proactively trying to lead generate a listing for your buyers to purchase. And that's the very same subdivision. Don't you think that buyer is then going to want to work with you? And oh, remember I told you that buyer also has a house to sell. You guys get it? This is the reason that you can use the passive lead generation to reinforce the proactive lead generation. But you can also hopefully see that a video like what we just described, really all these ideas, they won't work, certainly not at a high level, unless you're doing the proactive lead generation. Well put. All right, point number 12 and 13 we teach in depth in Premiere, so I'm not going to spend too much time hovering, but <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sorry, number 13 and 14. Why shouldn't you you why shouldn't you hire a discount broker? Well, that's something that you should know how to handle anyway cuz it may come up on a listing appointment. I'll give the flip side to that though. <laughs> is you could create a contrarian video saying why you should try to sell your house yourself. You could. You know, I mean, you just want your phone to ring, baby. Right, you want your, and like Julie's idea earlier, you're, you know, going to obviously root out potential sellers. So there's an idea for you. Yes. And number 14, explain the benefits of buying versus renting. We have a great chart and graph in Premier Coaching. And I think you can even plug in different purchase prices and lease prices so that you can compare whether you should be buying or renting. You could do a video about that. You know, I should take a half step back because there's going to be some new agent that's panicking right now that I'm suggesting they make videos on why sellers shouldn't hire yeah. agents. Well, the fact is that statistically in many markets, it actually... Uh, the seller will net more if they list the house with an agent and go through a, a you know a, an approach where it's being exposed to more people just sort of makes sense and we teach you how to explain all that using actual facts you know in premier coaching you guys can join premier coaching right now for free the link is in today's show bio um, yeah so that would be a video where you're going to entice them to watch because you're going to be giving them instructions on how they can sell their house without an agent say for example and then you're going to go through and you're going to give them the, I would the say, the counterbalance to it, right? So they can see the pluses and the minuses of what they're considering doing. And remember, we teach you a ton on how to list an unrepresented owner, aka for sale by owner. And I've talked about it endlessly on this podcast as well. Point number 15. Point number 15, I have some of my elite coaching clients doing this. Use a video to announce your regular Facebook live sessions to answer all real estate questions people have about buying or selling in your town. You could even do a Facebook live while you're walking around in a community door knocking or while you're walking around in a community, uh, you know, doing a preview of a new listing. You, if you did, you know, that Facebook Live then could be then repurposed as a YouTube video. Yes. Okay. And last but not least, and there's many more, but we can't do all of them on the podcast. Number 16, how to get an instant offer on your property. Now, if you're in eXp, you can explain your Express Offers program that's a pretty cut and dry bullet pointed presentation. How to get an instant offer. Why would you want an instant offer? So instant offer basically is a tool only available to EXP agents where you will then approach a seller and Mr. Seller, we have three options when selling your house. We can obviously retail it. We're going to obviously position it correctly in the market. We're going to get the condition right. We're going to do all the things necessary. We're going to market it at the highest level. Here's my marketing plan. Here's what we're going to do. This is what, if we sell it for a retail price, this is what your net's going to be. That's approach. Now, if you don't want to wait, Mr. Seller, if you don't want to do repairs in the house, maybe you don't want to be inconvenienced with the showings, we have two other options. We can sell it to an investor, and um, that will be essentially us pricing the house. Maybe the house needs work, guys, and the seller doesn't want to do the work. We can price it so that an investor who might want to purchase it and flip it is going to uh, find the price attractive. Now, that's going to be a reduction from if the house were in tip-top retail shape. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little side coaching on this. It's very difficult for uh, home flippers to make margins right now because they're uncertain what the properties in many markets are going to be worth when they, the work is done. And also, inflation is killing some of their margins. Uh, so that makes the third option. So, Mr. Seller, if you don't want to take the time to retail it um, and you don't want to, you know, essentially put it for sale looking for an investor at a reduced price, then the third option is, is we can sell it through express offers. And that means we can actually have a written verified offer from an actual investor, 100% cash buyer. I can give that to you within 24 or 48 hours. Now, here's what I will suggest. If you're dealing with a house that's not a perfect retail house, let the seller know, take, take option A and option C. So get it together so the seller, uh, you're going to put the house for sale. You're going to do your best to retail it. In many markets, frankly, even a house that's not priced right or even the greatest condition or location is still going to sell. 
and then say, so we can go that route. But if after a certain amount of time, if we haven't received an offer on the property and you're ready to sell the price, the house to an investor, we have this written verified offer from Express Offers that's waiting, um, you know, uh, for you to accept if you just want to get the process over quicker. You can make that decision at any time, Mr. Seller. And that's something I offer you because I'm with eXp Realty. Now, if you guys are with eXp Realty and you're not an eXp offer, uh, Express Offer certified, definitely get that done. If you're not e with eXp Realty and you want to learn more why you're at a disadvantage in the marketplace not offering this, well, you know, this is a great time for you to upgrade your brokerage experience. We've made it easy for you. Just simply text the words, e, the letter EXP, the letters EXP to 47372, or if you're ready to join EXP Realty and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be very proactive in your success at EXP Realty, text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206, or again, there's links in the show bio and the description from today. Yes, perfect. So you guys have lots and lots of action points. We have educated you, motivated you, and now it's your turn to get into action. If you have any questions, you know how to reach us. Otherwise, we'll see you on tomorrow's show. You guys have a fantastic day. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.